While this is a review in the usual vein, I need to document my experience with this game. Let's get the facts out of the way. Hiperike's Papoito... Papoito? Is, is that how you pronounce it? Papoito? -to -to? Is a part of the Hiberike series. From what I could find, it started on the NES as just plain old Hiberike in Japan and Euphoria the Saga in PAL regions. It was a platformer and its successor was Hiberike's Papoon, which was a puzzle more in line with this game. Hiberike's Papoon and this game were both released on the SNES, but this also came out on the Saturn and PlayStation as well. If you've ever played Puyo Puyo, god damn I hope I've pronounced that correctly, this game is almost exactly like that. Or Dr. Mario. So my gaming experience went exactly like this. It's 4pm on a Sunday. I'm chill as fuck, I'm having a few drinks. I start this game. I note the presentation for the review. I already knew this was a puzzle game going in, so I know what I was in for. I thought to myself, I love Baku Baku Animal. I leave the default settings and start playing. Didn't get past the first level. Oh well, I'll keep trying. Ah, I didn't make it again. I try again and again. Still no luck. What the fuck is going on? It's now 4.32pm and I've attempted this first level five, maybe six times. At the very least. I'm no longer chill. I'm tense. I threw down my controller in a fit of rage at one stage. And kinda drunk. I... don't deal well with losing. This weekend was gonna be swell, and it was the break I really needed. I'd try once more. Nope. Failed again. I thought maybe I'm not good at puzzle games. I played and nearly finished Puyo Puyo. Breakthrough. Got a fair way into Chain Reaction, and once upon a time, many, many moons ago, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine and Dr. Mario. Okay, fuck it. I need to concentrate. I stop drinking. I also stop crying. This time, the tissues that sit beside my computer are being used to mop up tears, which, to be fair, also wasn't the first time. I give it one more shot and I got close. Still not happy with everything, I go into the options, I turn down the difficulty from level 11, um, not sure how that numbering system works to be honest, down to level 2, so I have at least some gameplay to show off that isn't me failing at the first level. Unable to finish the game on level 1 would surely be a poor reflection on me, it'd be the sort of player that's a stay at home mum who has nothing else better to do than to play Bejeweled, Candy Crush and maybe if they were feeling a little hardcore, Plants vs Zombies. The sort of player that breathes through their mouth. The sort of player that has opposable thumbs but their monobrow suggests that these thumbs are brand new to the gene pool. The sort of player that finds Call of Duty too advanced. The sort of player that, well, you get the message. I want to feel like my failures are dignified if I don't make it through because I always have level 1 so it could get easier. Not really, but close enough. Presentation is very cutesy Japanese anime. It's okay, I guess. I'm not a massive fan of it, but it does the job. Graphics are pretty weak. This is something that could have easily came out on the Super Nintendo or Mega Drive. Oh wait, it did. I'm not going to keep calling it the Genesis because where I'm from, it was called the Mega Drive. And the Mega Drive sounds like a powerhouse. Genesis sounds like the execs at Sega put forth two names to the CEO, thinking he would choose Mega Drive, because it sounds like the sort of console that would give you a Chuck Norris roundhouse kick to the face. And then Genesis was the backup name. That being said, it has a sharper look to it as the graphics on the SNES look smoother with a softer look. So it looks like this has a smidge more detail. Sound is cutesy music I would expect to hear from an anime. It's alright. It's not really my preference, but it works with the game. Gameplay is a pretty standard fare. Line up four blocks of the same colour to eliminate them. The only mechanic introduced, which was nice, but not a massive game changer, was the moving creatures named Poro Poros. It does make things harder, and in some cases I didn't see them when they were situated towards the top of the screen. Controls are fine. <coughs> the 
you have a two-player mode, which I didn't really get a chance to play. But, from what I've read, you can perform a special kind of attack, which can be activated by eliminating more than one formation with one pair of blocks. But the game offers up plenty of challenge. God knows I experienced that firsthand. Would I recommend this game? The one aspect left out of this equation which will make all the difference is a Japanese copy of this game which will go for 15 to 40 bucks, which is an insane price gap, I know. But if you're on eBay at the right time, then the lower price is possible. But this is not a common sight, and if you're impatient, then you'll be paying the higher end. But that's not where it finishes going crazy. It was not released in the US, but it was released in the PAL regions, and the PAL copy can go for 100 bucks, and in fact, I've seen it as high as 150 bucks, complete and in good condition. With that in mind, this game is not worthy of your time, and it's really only for serious collectors. I needed this game in English because at the time I felt that it would make a significant change to the game. Yeah, it does not. The game doesn't offer anything really new, and the only reason I can find on the net for the insane prices is the game didn't sell well originally. And it's kinda clear why. If you can get it cheaply, it's a nice addition to your collection. It's not 100% necessary, but it ticks enough of the boxes to be acceptable and puzzle fans should play this.